art has always been an integrated part of my life. If you combine growing up in New York City in the 70s and 80s when, in fact, art was everywhere, including in the form of graffiti art, uh, not necessarily only in what we think of now as public art, but really community art exposed to the world in a very particular way. Um, and my father was a documentary filmmaker, actually. He made a film called Style Wars about the origins of hip hop culture and graffiti art in New York City. And I was, I think, eight, seven or eight when that film came out. So it's really always been part of my education at home, um, both what some people might call high art, my mother worked at, at the Met, uh, and I always knew that those institutions were there and open to me, um, but also a, a broader concept of art and a real integration into my life because of my parents, so a way of looking and seeing, a way of listening and hearing that is about trying to understand a, a range of experiences through art and art on its own merits. So we basically used art as a way for Mariko to come to know the world uh, through paintings, through dance, through sculpture, and through theater. Uh, and that's the way that we were able to reach even beyond New York for her to uh, learn a little something. So when I look back to when I first joined Art Table and who was the head of a museum, if you look now, if you look at every borough of Manhattan, of the Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island, you see in Queens, you see that women are heading major arts institutions, not only in the visual arts, but in the performing arts. That was not the case in the 1980s. So I think that they set a great marker for the generations to come. I think that mostly now in terms of up and coming artists and up and coming arts leadership, because, of course, I am at Bennington College and I'm watching students grow into becoming artists, becoming arts administrators, becoming leaders in the arts. We have among our alums many uh, fabulous and well-known women in the arts. And uh, it's always interesting to me to talk to young women about feminism. And in the case of Bennington, we're often talking about feminism and the role of women in the arts and the role of the woman's voice. And I would say even 10 or 15 years ago, not at Bennington in particular, but more broadly, there was still very much a conversation about whose gaze mattered. And now, I think it would be unthinkable, in a way, to privilege only one kind of gaze, let alone only one gender of gaze. And so the way that we think about not only who makes art, right, whether it's, in our case, alums like Helen Frankenthaler, to go that far back, or Sally Mann, or who gets to talk about art, Lucy Lepard, though she's not alone, she came to speak last year, and listening to the way that um, women who are uh, just starting out their careers and women who are much further advanced in their careers engaged with the way that, uh, that she talked about the role of the women, the woman's gaze and the role of the women artist, uh, but also the role of institutions and um, the ways in which who runs those institutions and who has a voice in those institutions it doesn't always have to be the top job necessarily in every institution, but whose voice is heard matters. And that's an ongoing conversation, not just frankly with respect to the arts, but institutions in general. Uh, and thinking about how we ensure that there are multiple voices at the table and that they're heard. And I love that New Yorker cartoon where I think it was a, a year ago or so, it's a boardroom. Uh, and there are a group of men and women around the board table, and the caption is something like, you know, thank you very much, Mary, for your comment. Now would a man like to say it? So that we can actually take it up. And uh, I think that still exists. Uh, so it's not just about who's in the room, it's about what voices matter. One of the great functions of our table is the networks it creates. It creates strong networks throughout the art world that didn't exist, actually, before our table. So I think growing those networks and diversifying those voices is a function that our table can lead in. And we were actually talking over dinner last night about people saying things to women's groups. Things like, um, 
well, now you've achieved this and that. Why do you still need this women's group? Why do you still need this women's network? I have yet to hear anybody go up to a bunch of men and say, why do you still need your network? In fact, the whole world works on networks. You know, all kinds of things are built on relationships. And those relationships matter. Uh, they open doors. They create opportunities. And when I think about the young women coming up, they need institutions like our table. They need organizations like our table. Um, they also need to know as early on as possible what's available to them. This is particularly true for those who didn't have, for example, the experience I had of being immersed and hopefully taught a little something uh, through the arts, having the arts be uh, a, a valued part of uh, not just your community, but an idea about what a career can be. And so I know that Art Table has programs uh, for high schoolers. I know that Art Table has programs for graduate students. Um, I think the more that in the moments when students are making decisions about what's possible for them career-wise, which is really, frankly, the undergraduate moment and just before, uh, the more that Art Table and organizations like Art Table can be reaching into those moments and present in those moments, uh, that would add extraordinary value. I think that uh, what are the opportunities for Art Table going forward? You know, speaking from my perspective here now as the leading edge, the older edge of the baby boomer generation, I think we're going to have a great many women who are going to be stepping down from their titular roles in their institutions, but who embody a great deal of wisdom and just smarts, and how to hang on to that over of women and to maximize what they can contribute is something that where our table could also play a leading role. Yes, and I can second that in that I have a built-in consultant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> always extraordinarily helpful <laughs> and I think uh, the, the women who are, as you put it, moving out of their titular roles are an extraordinary resource uh, and connecting uh, younger women and women just coming up with them would be extremely valuable.